Now then, people, and good morning and welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. And it's time for another Leeds United video. What a mad few weeks uh, it has been. Um, but yesterday or this morning, uh, the transfer window for Leeds United drew to a close. And of course, in typical Leeds United fashion, it ended up with us being absolutely screwed, bent over a barrel and up shit creek without a paddle. Look, Leeds United unfortunately lost the best player the championship uh, had to offer. And the best player in our team, of course, Luis Sinistera, exited for Bournemouth. Uh, deal sheets were in. Uh, if you joined us on the stream, you'll know what I'm talking about. But basically, we missed the deadline, but both clubs sanctioned the deal sheet. And uh, he left uh, with uh, with loan with an option to buy if Leeds United aren't promoted. So therefore, if Leeds United do go up this season, we'll be able to retain his services. Maybe he has a barnstorming season and we can sell him for 40 million as opposed to the 22 that's been agreed if we don't get promoted. Um, but look, on the bright side, Leeds United do have a player. Um, it's transpired um, that that Nice had already, um, you know, uh, triggered his release clause, and that was the issue over the contractual thing because Sinistera believed we should have accepted it. Um, lots of different ins and outs with this one, and we will break it down. But ultimately, the reason we agreed to do a deal with Bournemouth was because they were going to give us Jade and Anthony for the season in return. And in this very video, we're going to be talking with a good friend of mine, Sam. From the back of the net Bournemouth fan channel, you might remember these lads when uh, fireworks were go going off at, at Ellen Road um, when it was bonfire night. Uh, big shout out to Square Ball. But no, listen, Sam is a great content creator and he's gave us the low down on Jaden Anthony. So that will be coming very, very shortly. But before we do that, please smash a like on this video, subscribe to the channel. Get your comments in, of course, hit that notification bell. Don't forget today's game day. So I will be doing a watch along of. Leeds versus Chef Wednesday, hopefully pick up three points and a clean sheet before the international break. And we can all forget about the end uh, to uh, the transfer uh, window because ultimately, over the course of it, it's been an OK window. The disappointing thing is uh, Daniel Farker said, leave the best till last, right? <laughs> he span us a yarn, but listen, it weren't his fault. I dare say it weren't even the 49ers' fault. It was Victor and Radrasani's fault. Putting these contracts in place over the course of um, the last season has absolutely screwed us. You know, we've seen Tyler Adams leave, Jack Harrison, Brendan Aronson, Rasmus Christensen, Robin Cock, Diego Lorente. The list goes on. Some of them I don't want to see ever again. And I don't think we will. Um, on the other hand, you know, some of them we might have to. Because players like Rasmus and that have already been booted out of the side. Brendan Aronson's getting red cards. Rod Robin Cox tackling his own goalkeeper. It just really illuminates to me the poor recruitment made by those that came before. But one thing I will say for this current ownership group, I know I battered them early on. I felt like it was a continuation of the same ownership, if you like. A lot of that being because Angus was still in situ. But the transfer business we have done is really, really good. You know, uh, Joel Pirro. Championship best striker. We went and got him. Jed Spence, amazing last time he was here. Went and got him. Joe Rode on international. Ethan Ampadu. I mean, look at the midfield four now of Gray, Ampadu, Gruyev and Kamara. Not many will compete. Leicester and Southampton aside. We're a much stronger side now. Um, yes, Sinistera's not in that front four anymore, which for me was hands down the best in the league and would, will, would have gone up there as one of the best front fours the league had ever seen. Um, to be honest, had we have kept them. He's gone though, but we do have Jaden Anthony, who has performed well at this level before in a team that has been promoted. So we have to give him time. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, let's back him. And I'll stop rambling now. It's quite a long intro, this, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. I don't care. Do it's one no, nil. If we keep down, do it if they 13th they in the do championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be... Oh, when, when have we got leads? I'm sorry to have to uh, subject you to that horrible photo this early on uh, on this morning. 
Uh, if you're watching it as I'm recording, it's about 9am. I'm still so tired, but listen, it's match day, man. Leeds are going to pick up three points, but yeah, uh, Sinistera there. Let's just get into the ins and outs of what actually happened on deadline day. So Phil Hayes done a brilliant uh, piece on The Athletic, uh, a long read on the uh, transfer window as a whole, including Amiri and others and Willie Nonto, you know, let's not forget we've managed to keep him and, and he'll be a star turn in this division, but Sinistera was the last act in the drama yesterday and it basically summed everything up as Phil writes. Uh, the release clause in his contract expired midway through August, but in his view and that of his camp, Leeds should have honoured that and accepted a bid from Nice, obviously, in Liga. Um, Leeds, for whatever reason, rejected that. Uh, and felt that the release clause wasn't triggered. And that's why we had that contractual issue. That's why he was taken out of the side. But clearly, the winger uh, and his camp in the end felt that Leeds stiffed them on that said clause. And that's why yesterday, in the end, uh, Sinistera, and you're going to call him a rat and all that, and I, I, and I get it, because he's tried to take our club to court. But you can't, for me, really blame the player. All this talk of, oh, well... You know, he could have stayed, etc. And I understand this is going to upset people, but he'll be on more money. It's Premier League. He has no ties to Leeds, etc., etc. The blame solely for me goes on those that written these stupid clauses in this contract. But ultimately, Bournemouth tabled a loan bid yesterday and Sinister passed a medical in London a little over an hour before the deadline. So late that the completion obviously required a diesel sheet. Jaden Anthony, I think, was a bit of a sticking point, whether or not sure he was uh, going to come over to the football club, but ultimately decided to do so. 24-year-old, almost 100 appearances now behind him and came the other way on loan. Obviously, he was there at the team hotel in London uh, when the process suddenly gathered pace. I almost feel a little bit sorry for him. Let's not forget he's actually played three times already this season. Uh, I read a report where it said that that basically he was the best player so far this season. So you can imagine him getting ready for Brentford and then he's getting told, look, mate, you, you're going back to the championship. So I feel a little bit sorry for him, but hopefully he can you know, shake that off and, and, and get ready for after the international break. Uh, Leeds, though, to be fair to them, and this is where you have to give them credit, they were adamant. They said, no, Sinistera shall not pass unless we get a player in return. By all accounts, there were other Premier League clubs interested in him. But Leeds United said no because there wasn't anyone within their setup that they needed. And of course, we needed a, a replacement to make sure we weren't uh, low on numbers. And Anthony was that guy. As the piece says, Leeds were adamant that they would only go through with losing Sinistera if a suitable replacement was offered up by the club signing the Columbia. And of course, United's high opinion and Daniel Farker's high opinion of Anthony was key in making Bournemouth's approach attractive. And that is ultimately how the deal came about. But listen, forget Sinistera, forget the rest of the rats that left the sinking ship. We have a top, top squad and a team that is ready to take on the championship. The season starts now for Leeds United, the 2nd of September. And what a great way to start it in a Yorkshire derby at home against, for me, probably the worst team in the division right now in Chef Wednesday. Can we get that clean sheet? Can we score some more goals? I think the answer to that is yes. But look, as promised, um, I spoke with Sam from the Back of the Net podcast and he's going to give us some more details on Jade and Anthony. Look, as a Bournemouth fan, I can only apologise for what's happened this season. Firstly, Andoni Iola, who you were flirting with, Max Aarons, Tyler Adams, and now the loan signing of, of Sinistera that looks like it, it will become permanent at some stage. I gather FFP probably is the reason why we can't pay out straight away. This is the lure of Premier League football, isn't it? But in Jaden Anthony, to tell you a little bit about him, you're getting a really hard-working, diligent winger who can score goals. He's primarily left-sided, can play on the right, but usually on the left. And he was a player that that started his his career like at Arsenal and then in the academy there but then we integrated them, him into ours under 18s under 21s and in our first championship season it with Scott Parker he got thrown into the side somewhat so Eddie Howe had left we had a season with Jason Tindall and then Jonathan Woodgate that didn't really really work out but under Parker we had a we had a vision a set style of playing but we didn't really sign the players that we needed in the summer transfer window in the following January we did so the start of the season we were lumbered with players that we didn't really know much about including Jaden Anthony who'd been sniffing around the first team 
uh, a few times previously, but never really got involved. But uh, him and a number of players really hit the ground running in the championship. So it's a league that they know, like inside out, that he knows inside out. 45 appearances for AFC Bournemouth when, when we were in that division. And he scored uh, eight goals as well for us, I think. He's a player that really thrives on having a decent left back. The fuck? to work with and to dovetail with. Now, I know that at the moment you've got Sam Byron, who's not an actual left back, but he seems to have slotted in there fairly well for Leeds so far. And he had a combination with Jordan Zamora for for Bournemouth, which saw lots of overlaps, underlaps, and he's a really, he's a really tricky player. He likes direct running. He cuts in on his right foot. He can, he can hit the ball with his left. He's a good crosser of the ball. And he gets forward and he scores goals as well. Tricky with his feet. Sometimes he's got a very slight frame. You think he's going to get knocked off the ball. But he's good at holding up the ball as well. He's diligent on the ball. And uh, I think he's a player that we were quite surprised was one of the players that was going the other way as part of the Sinistera deal. Because we personally thought that someone like David Brooks might, might go the other way. So it's a shock to us really that that he's gone the other way but because he scored Premier League goals as well he scored uh I think three Premier League goals also in the EFL Cup when we played Everton I think he scored then as well so he's a player that has scored at the top flight and interestingly Andoni Areola our boss has has heavily relied on him in the first three games of the season that we've had so that was another reason why we were a little bit shocked as to why that's happened but it's quite clear that Sinister is an upgrade uh on Anthony but I'm sure he'll hit the ground running. I, I really do. One thing that you've got is a player that rarely gets injured. Rarely gets injured. And so he, he will always be available. I can't really remember him having a having a having an injury that's kept him out for more than a week. Whereas the other way around, Sinister has not exactly got a great track record. So part of me thinks you've probably got the better deal here. But yeah, a direct runner, likes to shoot, um, sometimes can overdo it at times and one of my other criticisms of him as well sometimes he's too he's too nice with his shooting what do I mean by that like sometimes it's all about uh, placement rather than power and sometimes that that's not enough to beat a keeper sometimes you just need to put your laces through it but sometimes he's he's got the technique but just a little bit soft and I think he would have scored more goals if he's got a more aggression that's one thing that I could seriously think he could add to his game but in the in the cut and thrust of the championship I really think he'll he, he will develop he will score you goals he will create goals as well and what he'll do is stretch defenses as well because he's a player that plays um that that the opposition will want to keep their eye on and you know that will probably open up uh, space in the rest of the pitch uh, for you as well so yeah I'm I really think he'll be a good acquisition for Leeds I do expect him to get on the score sheet and I'll be certainly keeping a close eye on him it sounds like it's it, there's no option to buy for Leeds United so I would absolutely have him back that's how much I rate him but I can also see why they've gone for, for Sinistera and then, you know, cast him aside for now. However, you have got a gem on your hands and I really, really hope you can all get behind him. Because I, I said sometimes he is a bit of a confidence player and when he gets a run in a team, he does start to do really well and produce the good. So I'm really hoping he does that for you. But anyway, good luck, Jaden Anthony. I wish you all the best at Leeds. Cheers. There you have it, folks. That's Sam from the uh, Back of the Net podcast. Uh, make sure you uh, check them out. The link to their channel is in the description. Great lad and a, and a great fan channel. And listen, I don't think there's any worries that Leeds United won't take Jaden Anthony into their arms, if you like. I don't think he's going to be seen as someone we didn't really want because we needed someone to replace Sinistera. And I think he will get minutes. And uh, because he's he's got more experience at this level than Somerville, than Rutter, than Nonto, um, you know, he's played what, over 40 games, was it? Um, so, listen, hopefully he can hit the ground running. And what be better way to start than after the international break? Look, he's not registered uh, to play uh, today, of course. Again, Chef Wednesday with the move only going through last night. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Jaden Anthony. Of course, I'd have rather kept Sinisteria. You know, I've said for some time now he becomes the best player in the division an hour. 
best player. It definitely goes without saying, but he's no longer here. Uh, the club, hopefully, if they get promoted, will be able to retain their services. Leeds fans probably won't want him here, but we've accepted Willie Nonto back. And uh, even if they don't want him here, if he has a good season at Bournemouth, then of course they can. Uh, we can demand big money for him. Maybe even from Bournemouth. We'll have to wait and see. But listen, I don't want to wish anyone ill, but it would be so great if Jaden Anthony had a barnstorming season for Leeds as we got promoted and Sinistera continues being the croc that we know and love. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Unlucky Louis, but that's the feeling right now. But listen, thanks everyone for watching this channel as per. Uh, I hope you now know a little bit more about Jaden Anthony and can forget this transfer window. It's so disappointing that it ended the way it did because it, it really built up to a bit of a crescendo and just went out like a, yeah, like a like a lead balloon, didn't it? It was that kind of vibes. But this is the Leeds United way. Um, honestly, I think Bournemouth missed a trick without the don't go to bed just yet tweet. I'd have been all over it if I was their social media guy, but it is what it is. Listen, smash a like on the video. 24,000 subscribers last night. Get your comments in, hit the notification bell, and make sure you join me live from 2 o'clock for Leeds United versus Sheffield Wednesday. And yeah, I'll see you there. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.